Hello and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. Today's video is going to be all about Adobe Photoshop for the iPad for beginners. This will be great for anyone who's familiar with the desktop program, or if you're new to Photoshop, this is a great introduction to a completely mobile workflow from your iPad. So grab your iPad and let's jump in. So when you first open the program, you'll go to your home screen by default. This is where you'll see your most recent files and new and upcoming features. This is a great way to get a chance to see what kind of updates they've been making to the app lately. Next, you have the Learn tab. This is where a bunch of handy hands-on tutorials will live. So if you ever forget anything or you need a little bit of a refresher, this is where you can go. The Discover tab is where you can check out other creators who are going live on Behance and using Photoshop and you can check out their projects. Under the Your Files tab, this will be the full view of all of your files from both Photoshop and Adobe Fresco if you have it installed on your iPad as well. So just keep that in mind. You can tap here to create a new folder, which is a great way to organize your files as well. Under Shared With You, this is where you'll have any shared cloud documents that anyone has sent you, they'll appear here. This is a collaborative feature that you'll see in a lot of Adobe programs. And then you have your handy deleted section. This is great for recovering old documents just in case you deleted them by mistake. Go straight to this section. You can hit the three dot icon next to any of your files and hit restore to bring them back. So once you're ready to create your own file, you can go to the bottom left hand corner here and tap create new. You can create a fresh canvas from scratch here. By default, your recent section will appear. This will be for any configurations of canvases that you've used most recently that you might wanna use again. But you can also choose from the templated sizes that they have categorized for print, screen, as well as film and video. On the right hand side here, you can title your document. You can choose your units, adjust your width and height, as well as the orientation of your canvas so portrait or landscape, as well as adjust your resolution. And then you can choose if you'd like a white, black, or transparent background to start off. So if you don't wanna create a custom canvas and start from scratch, you can always go to import and open in the bottom left-hand corner. This will allow you to pull photos from your photo library, your files app, or to take a fresh new photo using the camera on your iPad. I'm going to be using a photo that I found in Adobe Stock. If you use the link in the description, you can get a free 30-day trial and 10 free stock photos to start. So let's jump in. So if you're familiar with Adobe products, this interface might actually look a little bit familiar to you. But in any case, let's go over the tools. In the top left-hand corner, we have our move tool. Just as it sounds, you can take the objects on your canvas and move them around using your Apple Pencil. Underneath that, we have the handy transform tool. As you can see, we can perform a number of actions, including scaling and rotating. Underneath that, we have skew. So from the corners, we can skew our image. Distort. So even more intense transformations, as well as perspective. So really drawing you to vanishing points. At the bottom, at transform settings, you can add a custom rotational angle if you'd like. So let's say I wanna exactly rotate this image by 30 degrees. If you're ever dissatisfied with whatever angle you've just chosen, you can hit that little arrow and it'll go back to whatever the previous angle was. And if you're just wanting to change your mind at all about your transformation and start again, you can just hit cancel in the top left corner. Next, we have our selection tools. You're gonna tap, press, and hold to see the full list. So we have lasso. The lasso tool allows you to make freehand selections using your pencil. And anytime you use a selection tool, you'll have a secondary menu pop up at the bottom. This will allow you to do other things like erase, mask the area. Also, you can deselect from here if you wanna undo your selection and do it again. Under lasso, we have object selection. 
To use this, you're just going to select a portion of your photograph and it'll make an AI decision of what the object in this photo is. So it did a pretty good job making that selection. If you're not satisfied with that selection, you can use something like the quick selection. So using the touch shortcut, you can adjust it to subtract or add portions back. Maybe you don't want to include certain things. Quick selection allows you to make pretty nice selections as well. Really nice sweeping over, and it really does a pretty good job. Next, you have your classic marquee rectangle. So just making a nice rectangle for many of these selections. You can move these areas as well. And similar to the rectangle, you have the ellipse. You can use the touch shortcut to create a perfect circle. So you can constrain those proportions. And the classic magic wand. So making selections around your photograph and it'll make selections based on the pixel information in the photo. You can always adjust the tolerance here. So it'll make a wider selection. So it selects more based on the amount of tolerance you have. So if you want a little bit of a smaller area to be selected, select a lower tolerance. This is also great for selecting the subject and it'll select the subject from the photo. And that's pretty accurate. I'd say it's pretty good. You also have the option to do quick action, removing the background. So again, you can save yourself some time and do those two quick actions to really allow you to make really good selections. Next, we have brushes. Photoshop has historically had a great brush selection and Kyle T. Webster has always been releasing more brushes seasonally for Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. If you press and hold, you can see your brush selection. So by default, there aren't that many brushes in the iPad program, but you can always hit this plus sign icon here and hit discover new brushes or import from files. In the description box below, I will be linking a place where you can go to download more Photoshop brushes into your programs if you would like. This menu can be dragged along your canvas into different positions. Any menu you see with that nice gray bar at the top means that it can be moved around into a different position. So you have your, for, your foreground color and your background color. These chips can be switched. Here you have your brush size, which can be adjusted accordingly. And then you have your brush settings if you hit the three dots at the bottom. In this area, you can adjust the opacity of your brush. If you press and hold the eraser, you'll have the same brush options as you do for your brushes panel, for your eraser, adjust your eraser size just by sliding up and down over the values and erase anything that you'd like. If you tap here, you can adjust the hardness of your brush as well. So maybe you don't want a soft edge, maybe you want it to be harder. You can adjust that here. Next, we have our clone tools. Again, we're gonna press and hold, and we'll see first the spot healing brush. So for the spot healing brush, it's just the way it sounds. You can take any areas of your photo that you'd like to adjust. And it will heal or restore or repair those areas. This is really great if you just wanna use it freehand. I suggest using this tool. Now the healing brush is a little different. For this, you're going to use your touch shortcut button. You're going to tap it and you're going to tap somewhere on your canvas to set a source. This will be the information that the program will use to then heal or adjust. So if I start drawing here, it's using this area of my drawing to make edits and adjustments based on the pixels 
in this area. Now, similar to Healing Brush, we have Clone Stamp. It's similar because you need to set a source. And then you can start filling in. This will make an exact clone of the area that you are sampling. Next, we have our adjustment tools. So we've got the classic ones from Photoshop, Dodge, Burn, Sponge, and Smudge. So you can use Dodge to brighten areas. For any of these, you can up the exposure, making them more intense. You can also adjust your brush size. You can also use Burn, which will darken areas. Sponge will desaturate areas. And the smudge tool, as it sounds, smudging. Next, we have the fill tool. So for example, let's say I wanted to add a nice background to this. I could just add in a single click with my fill tool. Now by default, it will fill using your foreground color. So if you want a different color to be the one that you choose, you can just adjust it here. Or if you ever want to switch your foreground and background color, you can just swipe simply like that. Next, we have the crop tool. So pretty standard. You can adjust the crop of your image. You can extend it past your canvas. You can also use the rotating at the bottom to rotate your image however you'd like. Next, there's the text tool. So to use this, you just tap your canvas. Some default text will appear and a secondary menu. You can use your own keyboard, double tap your text, adjust the font size. You can also use this arrow navigation at the bottom to move it around. And if you ever want to add more fonts, you can hit this plus sign icon and hit add more. You can add more fonts using the Adobe Creative Cloud app. It's really easy. Anything that you add to your font library there will automatically be added to all of your Adobe programs. Next, we have your image placer. You can pull more images from your photo library, your files app, your Creative Cloud libraries, or take a new picture using the camera on your iPad. Then we have the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper is just you moving this little circle around your image and then you could use your brush tool and start using that new color, for example. So the last tool that isn't in the toolbar is this touch shortcut that we've been using on and off. So if you want to learn more about other ways that you can use it, you can just go to this question mark icon and hit view touch shortcuts. And it'll go over all of the different things that it can do and all the different ways that you can use it. Next, let's get acquainted with our gestures. So let's say I add something to this image, two finger tap to undo, three finger tap to redo, fingers spread apart to zoom in, fingers pinched to zoom out, quick pinch once to fit it snugly to your screen. Next, let's look over on the right hand side now at our layers panel. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see our layers panel. This is what will take our layers in and out of view. If you want to see an expanded view of your layers, hit the one underneath and you'll see that you can see not only the layer, but you can also see the name. So you can rename your layer if you'd like. Just double tap and rename it using your keyboard. You can also toggle them on and off using the eye icon here or the eye icon below. So it's really up to you what you prefer. If you like the compact view more or if you prefer an expanded view, then you have your blend modes. So pretty standard to see these different blend modes. Here you'll also see converting to smart object, 
you'll see more handy quick actions. So you can do them from here or you could do them from the selections panel like we saw before. And this little speech bubble icon is for commenting and collaborating. So if this is a file that maybe you're using as a part of a client project or with a team, you can add comments and you can share it accordingly with any person that you're working with. Now here I can add a new layer by hitting this plus sign icon and choosing accordingly, whatever I'd like to add. I could also add a new layer from here. Here is your visibility toggle. We also have masking. If you wanna do that. We also have clipping masks underneath that. Edits without actually degrading the image itself. So you can do some non-destructive editing. So that's an option. There's also a filters and adjustments panel. So things like Gaussian blur are here. You have invert and you have some automatic adjustments. So auto tone, auto contrast and auto color. The program will do the work for you and make the best approximation based on the information in your image. And this three dot icon is where you can make other adjustments. So locking your layer, deleting and so much more. Any of those options can also be accessed by tapping your layer and hitting the three dot icon that appears there. Now that we've looked at our layers panel, let's go to saving and exporting our image. So whenever you're ready to save your document, you can hit this little up arrow and you have a few options. You can quick export it as a JPEG and save it to your device. Or you can go to publish and export, choose your file format. So as you can see, you can save it in PNG, JPEG, Photoshop, or TIFF, hit export. And from here, I could send it to my Mac if I want. As soon as I hit that back button, my file will be saved in the cloud. So once I open Photoshop on my desktop, this file will be here and all of my cloud files will be here, which is nice. So let's say you make an edit. You can hit the name of your file and hit save now, which will save that as the latest version of this file. If you're looking to learn more about digital art programs, I'm gonna be linking my playlist for Adobe Fresco and some more videos in the description box below for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave it a like if it helped you out and if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment with any questions that you might have and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.